I'm Logan Crawford and right now on Spotlight, we are talking about a sensational book that's more like a series of books because it's a collection of short stories. It is called Hardhead City. It is written by Calvin Kerr. It is an absolute delight. You'll want to savor each one of these stories. They are that interesting. We'd like to thank Calvin for being here today. And we'd like to thank the folks at Sweet Spire Literature Management for helping put Calvin in the spotlight today. Calvin, thank you so much for joining us here on Spotlight. And I thank you very much, Logan, for having me. My pleasure. Loved Hardhead City. It's what, like eight short stories, correct? Yes, sir. It is eight short stories. Now, out of those eight, do you have a favorite? I would say Hardhead City. <laughs> the Hence story. the name of the book, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Tell the folks at home a little bit about the story, Hardhead City. Well, Hardhead City is a story about an army instructor in Baltimore City. The school he taught at was an alternative school. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it was like a second chance for the students. Being an army drill sergeant and going to a school of that nature, I was prepared to tackle the different situations that the students presented and the school to, to begin with. Absolutely. It was resistant at times. However, my disciplinary tool was like, the push up and also I would not let them, I didn't want them to fail, <laughs> in other words. Right. I wanted them to do something with their lives and always have to stress to them, you in Baltimore City, you gotta understand the environment is different. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of change their way of thinking. Matter of fact, I used to tell them, it's okay to love someone. It's okay to like someone. Mm. Good advice. You got to tell people in such a tough city that it's okay to be a little soft sometimes, that it's good to have a good heart. Yes. And it was, like I said, in the first beginning of when I started teaching, they resisted me. Mm. They were, I mean, I just had to just keep using my disciplinary tool until they got to the point where he is not gonna, he is not going to back down. I ran them a mile or two. I did all the things that built their bodies. As I said before, there was some resistance, but when they start feeling good, the body feels good and they start feeling good about themselves. I used to take them to leadership weekends take them to events such as, you know, when you go to the, the parks, the different recreational parks, mm -hmm. you know, such, you know, uh, any of the different uh, recreational parks. And together I made them be battle buddies. So right. they can, and normally when I took them to a recreational park such as, I can't, Think of the one that I normally would take them to. Oh, Great Adventure or something, some park mm -hmm. such as that nature. And they would go with a county school. And I would put a, a county school student with a city school student. Mm. But the, the kids in the county was more stable, I'll put it that way. So they learned from each other. I made them battle, battle buddies like they would sleep at the top bunk and one would sleep at the bottom bunk and they were better, but whenever that person is, I want you to, I want to see you with him, you know, and they learn to get along. Wonderful. Sounds like you were a wonderful teacher. So this book is inspired by your real life experiences? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Let me just go over a few of those experiences. Sure. Real quick. Okay, the first, uh, title was Black, Black Mondays. Mm -hmm. That short story takes place in Memphis. When I was in Memphis, I had a chance to see or to watch the shooting of Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. 
So in our high school, that was our little rebellious way of, of getting back at the shooting of Martin Luther King. We called it Black Monday, so we would boycott the schools on Mondays. The next story would be chained to the porch. This lady told me her story about how her father practically had his daughters chained to the porch. It was like just they, he would beat them for going out or doing things of that nature. Mm. I'm going to go on because I just want to hit on a short purview of the uh, stories that I, I want to talk about. Sure. Yeah. The next one was Whose Life Is It Anyway? When I was a drill sergeant down in Fort McClellan, Alabama, it was a female soldier that she just gave up. And I had worked so hard to get her in condition to succeed, but she didn't want it. She had a chance to finish the cycle, but she didn't want it and she just quit. So what I said to her, why go back to Mississippi? Mississippi is one of the poorest states in the union. Why would you want to go back to Mississippi when I'm giving you a chance to get in the army? And from there, you could go to college. And there's a lot of different things that you could do with your life. But she didn't want it. But it's more to the story than her. It's more of the, the people that wanted it. And it's just a true story about a basic training drill sergeant trying to train privates. Right. Okay, the next one I will talk about is Hard Hit City. I talked about that already, mm -hmm. you know, from in Baltimore. Let me go on. The next one will be two Dan's. It's two brothers with the same name, split family situation. It was hard. You know, you were living in one family and then your mother leaves and a whole new family comes alone mm -hmm. <laughs> from nowhere that you didn't even know about, brothers and sisters that you didn't know about. That's, that, that one is called Two Dance. Three Hots and a Cop is when I ran identical link inside the prison in Fort Leavenworth. The inmate that I pretty much talk about, I talk about all of them, but the one specific inmate, I said, why did you um, do this to this young man to get put into the prison at Leavenworth. I mean, some crazy stuff that you people shouldn't do to each other. He said, because he was a punk. I said, when you make somebody do something to you like that, what do you think you are? And now you stuck in a, in a prison for doing something that was not just inhuman, human, inhumane to me. Absolutely. So that was, and I had to make sure that he understood. You, you locked up. You understand you're locked up for doing something foolish. Yeah. And the last story is Who's Loving Katie? That is a sad story about uh, a, a daughter and her father. Yeah. And the it's just criminality of what he did to, to his daughter. Mm. Escape from Panama is when I was in Panama, I was an infantry scout in the jungles. And also I trained people. However, when you got people coming from New York City or Chicago, at the time they were into like drugs and Panama was a city that was famous for cocaine. Mm. So they would be, they, so in this story, they had locked the guy up. He, he got away some kind of way and he escaped from Panama because of the drug cartel that they had in Panama. And that was something that uh, is more to the story than just the yeah. drugs and the things of that nature. I just, I'm just giving you a-, a Sure, like, no, you're giving us a brief stories. overview brief. of all of the stories and they all sound wonderful. They all are wonderful. You've had quite a life. You've done many, many different things. You've lived in a lot of different places. You've had many different roles in life. It seems like the common thread though is you're usually trying to empower people. You're usually trying to help people. Yes, sir. Some of the different things that I've done in my life, you know, I was the first sergeant in the army. 
Matter of fact, I was in the sergeant major slot when I retired, but that's another story. <laughs> the, I was on the DMC in Korea. I was only like maybe 21 years old in charge of M113, messing with those North Koreans on the DMC mm. in those trenches on the DMC. Yeah. Another thing, I was a basketball coach at the same school down in Baltimore City where I went undefeated coaching those the same kids I was talking about as mm. far as the junior ROTC program. I made them strong, <laughs> you know. Yeah. That was, they became uh, more cohesive together after I finished, you know, kind of structuring their lives a little bit. And when I left, going to me senior high school, those kids cried. I never thought they would cry, you know, because they wanted me to stay. They, they, the girls, are you gonna leave us? You know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So Wonderful. another thing that I was a tra track commander, machine gun, <laughs> cavalry scout, infantry man. I mean, it was just so, so, so many things that I, I can't even think about some of the other stuff I did. Plus I was a registered dental hygienist, bachelor's degree in business. I mean, it's just so many different things that I, God has gave me yeah. to just prevail. I mean, I'd be in spots, I was in spots that I would never thought that I would make it out of. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, God gave you a lot because God knew you were gonna do a lot. I mean, I think every opportunity you were given, you tried to empower the people around you. You tried to show them a better way. You tried to show them a way out. You tried to get them to get straight with their lives. And I think that is uh, so noble that you always work to do that, sir. Yeah, it's just that I always say, if you're gonna do something, try to be the best mm. at what you do. I was not even, didn't even have the rank in some of the positions I was put in, people were working for me that outranked me. Yeah. But they would put me in those positions. And I said, put that guy, he's, he, has, he has more rank than me. Put him in charge. Dumb, dumb. I said, well, you shouldn't promote them. You know, my thing is coming from an infantry guy to all to being an RDH, RDH and being, doing different things, schooling and everything, training, so much training. Right. That it just is grooming. And I'm not a very, mm -hmm. very guy, I say, type of guy that is so strong and not. I'm not a strong guy, I thought. But when I, I'm put in a situation, it seems like it just bring my strength out. I think you're spiritually strong and I think you've got a lot of resolve. And I think those are two things that help you excel as a leader. And it seems like you've been a leader your whole life. Tell me why you decided to put these down in a series of short stories. Because I feel that if I wrote a book, it may take, some people don't like to read a, yeah. for a long time. <clears throat> so if I put short stories, they can read one short story, put it down yeah. and come back and read another. Exactly. And that's, that was my idea that if people come to me and after they know that I write short stories, they tell me their stories. Matter of fact, before we go off this air, I have to show you my second book. <laughs> it's Whoa. called uh, Can I Get a Light? Yeah, yeah absolutely. This, What's your this, other book? This, Can I Get a Light? It has oh, okay. uh, nine short stories. Just a few of the titles. The Raider Who Loved America. That's a, that whole story is a metaphor. The second one is Dead Letter about a German woman's story. Mm -hmm. The third one is Jeremiah's dad. Brother, can I get a light? That's a feature story. Yeah. The crack in the mirror image is another story. The lucky one, the coon who set the OA and my friend Tommy. And every one of these stories are different in its own right. But I Wonderful. want to tell you, let me just say this, share this one story. Sure. My friend Tommy. My friend Tommy was one of my soldiers. He was Caucasian. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a, a real father, but he was always un, under my wing. You know, he would do everything I tell him to do. He was a, a complete soldier and I was proud of him. And I don't want to give it away. Right, right. No, don't give it away. Yeah, something tragic happened and I was just, 
it just tore me apart when I found I'm sure. Out. I'm sure. When I left them. But anyway. Well, I'm glad you put these stories down into books. They're wonderful books. Hardhead City is available on Amazon. You can download it or buy the physical copy. It's highly recommended. It's a series of eight short stories. And it's very convenient. You can read one story, put it down, pick it up, read the next story, particularly in this distracted age in which we live where people are pulled by their computer, by their phone, by their wives, by whatever it is. There's lots of distractions out there. So make sure you distract yourself in a good way. Read about a life that has been very well spent, very well lived and dedicated to humankind. It is called Hardhead City. It is written by a magnificent man by the name of Calvin Kerr. And it's been a true delight to speak with him here today on Spotlight. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. And I thank you for having me. And I'm sorry about all the stumbling <laughs> that I went through. While you I weren't stumbling. Myself. You were great. And I appreciate everything you told us. All the information is wonderful. And I'm sure very much appreciated by our viewers. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.